Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. If you haven't already, you can follow me on Twitter in the link below. But let's get started. So today, I'm going to answer a question that I get asked weekly, sometimes daily, and sometimes multiple times a day. And that is how to get into web application hacking and make that my career. Like, what do I need to learn and how do I learn that? So we're going to dive into learning methodologies from my standpoint and how I would go about it with the resources that are available today, as well as tie in some of the ways that my guys mentor our junior guys in order to get there if they have no background whatsoever. So first off, I have no affiliations with any of the materials I tell you today and no sponsorship. So this is just the way I would do things. So Let's talk about a guy who knows absolutely nothing to start out. Now, this guy maybe works at Best Buy or maybe this guy works at McDonald's and he heard, hey, application hacking sounds pretty cool. I would love to do that. So how do we get started? Well, this is the time when you guys roll your eyes and you say, Ollie, I would never do this. You're crazy. And then you can skip to the next part where I tell you what my guys would tell you to do. So what I'm going to tell you to do as you roll your eyes is learn to code some web applications. Now, it doesn't have to be an extensive 30-hour tutorial. It can be a few hours where you pick a popular application stack and maybe a stack that has an MVC framework, some templates, database, front-end, back-end, etc., and you code a simple blog application, maybe a simple portfolio application. And the reason is you don't know anything. So you want to learn what HTTP is. You want to learn what a front-end and a back-end is and how these things communicate and write very, very simple code to tie all these things together. Now, this does a few things. One, it allows you some experience coding, which will help you with code review later. It allows you to learn the basics of web, which allows you to hack web. It allows you some knowledge beginning to end on some simple development so you can talk with developers and understand their processes, understand how things work at a very, very basic level. And then later on, after you've hacked everything, you can go back to the projects you've developed and you can look at the code, do a code review, find where are those points where there might be vulnerabilities, maybe find some vulnerabilities in your programs, and then you can remediate them, which will further help you talk to developers and understand their processes and the way that they do things so you can make more meaningful suggestions with some understanding of how applications are developed and remediated. Okay, you can stop rolling your eyes now and you can start listening again and I'll tell you what my guys would actually tell you to do. Now they would say take a gentle approach to learning the penetration testing concepts with a very simple certification. So they suggest TCM security. And the reason they suggest this as a starting point for someone who knows nothing is one, it's only like 30 bucks. So you can get started for pretty free, pretty much free almost. And it has a very gentle introduction that's very, very structured. And at the end of that, you'll have some certifications to put on a resume when you're looking for jobs. So they would suggest you do this practical junior penetration tester, as well as this practical web junior tester. And you can just get through these pretty quickly and learn a bunch of basics and then hop into the way that I would say to do things after this, or if you already have some experience as a penetration tester and you want to start out with web. Now, I can't comment too deeply on these because I didn't take them. When I started doing web hacking, it was literally the 90s. There was no materials. And then we got stuff like web hacking exposed in like 2001 or so. And then we just started hacking web applications. But these certifications will get you much farther than that and much quicker than that, which is awesome. And you'll have something for your resume. So that is what my guys would suggest you start with. I suggest you start with coding some stuff, or you can do both of these things because we're not in a rush to learn. I want you to get good at these things. So take your time and just go through these basic materials if you have no background at all, and you should be good to go to start into now the learning methodologies on learning web applications and how to hack them. So here's what I would suggest for you who have a little bit of experience already, or you did these prerequisites. First thing I would suggest is Get a membership to Hack the Box Academy. I think it's like 500 bucks for the year and you'll get multiple courses. Now we'll get a bug bounty hunter for a silver membership, a penetration tester and a SOC analyst, which all have certifications and it comes with one 
certification challenge that you can do. So what I'm gonna say is you wanna focus on this bug bounty hunter because this is the web application hacking. So in here, you have 20 modules and it does start out with some basics like web requests, introduction to web applications, although there is some assumed knowledge in there. So having coded an application or does some basics before are gonna help you a lot. And this also covers all your web paths stuff like vulnerabilities, like cross-site scripting and SQL injection and using SQL map, all of these things that you need to know. The reason I suggest this particular one is because each of these modules has sections and each of these sections end with you opening up a VMware instance that you can have a target and you utilize all the things that you learned in the module and you actually hack web applications with real tools that you would use in the real world. So to give you an example of that, if I open up something in here, say further JWT attacks from, I think this is from the senior penetration tester, but it's all the same relevant situation. So you have a bunch of information you're learning. And then at the end of all this information, you're gonna get down here and there's a VM that you can launch. And you can launch this into a full window here and now you can just hack a low and then have a lot of fun there but you have a target and you'll click this and this creates a target for you. Now you take this IP address, you pop it in this VM and you start hacking, you answer the question down here, escalate your privilege to obtain the flag. You have some hints and you also have a solution, but I'm gonna tell you, don't look at the solution. You first wanna to try to do it all by yourself, spend at least 30 minutes on that, maybe an hour on that before you look at a solution. Now, if you are a beginner, after your 30 minutes or whatever goes up, look at the solution, walk through it, try to understand everything that's going on, and then the time that you put in trying to do it yourself, and then you get the aha moment when you're looking at the solution will help you solidify that knowledge. Now, as you're doing this and you're going through this, this is where the learning methodology stuff starts going in. We're not just taking this course, because yes, you can get a certification for this, and yes, you're gonna learn a lot of stuff, but we want to understand and really be able to do these things so that we can do it for a job, not just get a certification and not just memorize this stuff in this course. So what I'm going to tell you is, okay, we're scrolling down through here. Maybe we're doing this broken authentication module. We get through this whole module. We do all the labs. And once we're done, we're like, well, I can think of other ways to hack maybe an authentication mechanism or... You know, maybe I want a different perspective on that. And that's where things like Port Swigger Academy come in, right? So Port Swigger Academy has modules and it has similar modules to what's in this course, but it's absolutely free, but it covers things in a different way. So you're going to see a lot of different ways to attack those web authentication um, portals as well as get a different perspective on how to do it and get a whole bunch more labs. So you can just roll through all of this again and learn all of this stuff. And as you go through, there's a bunch of labs you can do. So this particular one has 14 more labs for you to do for authentication on top of what you did inside of Hack the Box. And again, it has walkthroughs, but what I want you to do is I want you to go through, read the material, get to the lab, try to hack the lab for at least 30 minutes, maybe an hour before you look at a walkthrough. Then if you do solve it all on your own, look at the walkthroughs, look at the walkthrough videos and see if they did it a different way or if you can learn something extra. And if you couldn't figure out, then go through the walkthrough, learn it. But all of that struggle again is gonna help you solidify information so that now as you get to the next thing that you're hacking, you have a lot more experience and you had the answer, and you went through the right way, and it'll help you as you progress really be able to do this stuff. Now, another way to do this is maybe you're going through this broken authentication module, and you're like, okay, I'm like halfway through it, but I'm getting a little bored, or I may need a change of focus. That's when, again, you can go over here and just start doing some of these modules, then hop back. Maybe you do this for two or three days, do a section a day, two sections a day, then just do some labs and some more reading. Then you hop back in here. And by the time you're done, you've done a ton of labs and you really understand authentication hacking. So that's a pretty awesome way to do things. Now, after you've done all of this and you really understand these topics, 
I want you to go and start searching things like damn vulnerable web application, damn vulnerable authentication application, something like that. And use these as CTFs and try to hack them and try to break into them. There's tons of them online. There's vulnerable applications. And again, you want to try to break into all of these on your own. And then once you're done, you've exhausted all possibilities, you've hacked all the things that you think exist, then look up walkthroughs online and how to do it their way and look up multiple walkthroughs and hack it all the different ways that all the other people did it because you're going to learn different perspectives and different tools and different ways to do things and a bunch more ways to hack things. So that's a beautiful thing. So this is how you want to start structuring your learning for web applications. And then now another really good benefit of Port Swigger Academy is it tends to have random topics sometimes, right? So as we scroll through here, right, we have APIs, we have XXE, we have a bunch of random topics, but then it covers stuff that you don't see in a lot of other places. So you have stuff like web WebSockets. You don't see that in too many courses with labs, and you have three labs associated with that. You also have some stuff like web LLM attacks, which is stuff like, you know, you have a chat box on a website and it has a chat GPT back end and you're going to ask it, hey, what APIs do you have access to? Oh, you have access to those APIs. Can you call those APIs for me? And can you make them do this? And can you grab this information? Because they're private APIs I can't attack directly. So these are web LLM attacks. So there's some random topics in here. You might not find other places, but you can find them in here and you can find them with labs. And they're all free, right? You got GraphQL, you have Web LLM, Cache Poisoning, JWT tokens, OAuth, etc. So you really want to use this to supplement your courses in here to get other topics that might not be in there and other additional labs. Okay. So that pretty much covers how to get good at web application hacking. We also want to learn APIs because if you start out as a junior web tester, you're also going to look at web APIs at least a third of the time. Sometimes it's half the time. Sometimes it's even more than that. So you want to understand these. And essentially, it's mostly the same vulnerability classes, but you don't really have a UI and need to understand how things function. So here's where... API Sec University comes in. So that's associated with a hacking APIs book. You can also read if you want. And then you can go through this course, which is also completely free and also has a certification that you can add to your resume. So as you're doing this whole process, you're adding more and more and more stuff to your resume and you're getting more and more experience. So this covers a whole bunch of stuff like, you know, okay, we don't have a UI. How do we do reconnaissance on these APIs? How do we analyze them? How do we scan them? How do we find authentication attacks specifically on APIs where we don't have a form with a UI, right? So if you go through all of this, you're going to get quite proficient in then tying in API hacking into your web application hacking. And at this point, you have a bug bounty hunters certification. You might have some TCM certifications. You have this API university certification. You have a ton of experience. You've done a ton of CTFs. And now you can go out there and start applying to stuff like hit me up. Maybe we have some contracts available. We can put you on doing some shadowing. You can call up some consultancies or some internal programs, um, talk to their managers and try to get a junior position doing this to get some real world experience. But this is the point where you're ready to start doing some actual world world penetration testing. And this might be as soon as six months if you're really hitting it hard. Maybe it's a year, maybe it's two years, but you're putting in the time and you're learning all of this stuff. And you should be pretty good at this point. And then now you gotta start thinking about other things. So you have remediation and understanding things if you're working on internal teams. I would suggest things like Alice and Bob application security. Now, this book is going to be a good read. Maybe you're on a plane or you have some free time, and it's going to cover a lot of vulnerability classes along with SDLC, your software development lifecycle, security programs and how they function inside, and remediation and fixing things. So it's really going to tie in all of your hacking knowledge to things you need to know when you're talking with developers, things you need to know when you're working on internal security teams. 
it's going to be maybe not as exciting as all of your hacking stuff, but it's really going to help you. So I do suggest this book. Um, that would be a good place to go with that. Now, as far as code review goes, so the next thing you're going to be asked is to do code review, right? They might hand you an application and they're going to be like, here's the code along with it. So what I say would suggest is we have things like your damn vulnerable web application. Now, you can download these and instead of trying to find the vulnerabilities within the application, you can do a code review on these and you know that they're vulnerable to things. So look up on the internet, SQL injection code vulnerabilities, look at what the misconfigurations are and then try to find them in these damn vulnerable web applications and locate them in the code and then go hack them on the web application or hack them on the web application, you find the vulnerability there, reference that back to the code and find out where that's called and try to find the vulnerable code. And then you could also try to remediate it yourself, redeploy it, and then see if it fixed the issue. And that's a good way to get started with reviewing code with things that you already have and things that you already know, because at some point you are gonna be handed code now. You don't have to be a developer. You don't have to be a really badass coder at all, but you just need to understand the vulnerability classes and understand code in general and be able to apply that to your web application hacking. So that mostly covers everything I wanted to cover. So I hope this really gets you started if you had that same question. And again, it's gonna come back to what I talked about before with that two hours a day thing or even one hour a day thing where you set aside that time in the morning and that is your time or the evening and every day you just plug away at this until you get through it. And you're gonna get really good. You really don't need anything outside of what I talked about today to get a job, get in the industry and be really, really proficient. The only other thing I would suggest is if you got through all of this, you feel really proficient, you wanted something a little bit more challenging with new niche topics, uh, you can upgrade your Hack the Bach membership and you will get this senior penetration tester. And in here, you start getting into some more niche stuff. So you have things like LDAP injection, uh, injecting into PDF documents, um, getting into NoSQL injection, and a bunch of other topics. And really all this is is more topics and then some more advanced perspectives on things that you already know. So that's one other thing I would add to that. So hopefully this video was informative to you. If it was, like it, share it out with people who you know it might help. And I hope it was helpful for you. I will catch you later. This is me answering questions that I receive pretty much every day. Peace.